Hi guys and welcome to Dark Soul, an empath guide to your dog's feelings. Today we're going to talk about how to train your dog to trust you. So stay tuned and have fun. All right, I want you to meet Bella. Bella was a bull mastiff Malinois mix, so two very different breeds. <laughs> But she looked like more of a bull mastiff than a Mali, just a little bit on the small side, right? And I'm telling you the story of Bella because she was a very good example of a dog who had lost any trust in humans and had to regain it completely. If your dog is not as bad or didn't have those experiences or is just distrustful in some situations you can still apply every single one of the techniques we used with bella and you will have a lot faster success so let me introduce you to bella she did come to her first family as a puppy they got her from some backyard yeah i don't really want to call that a breeder but for the lack of another word, let's say Rita. She didn't learn anything there. Nothing good at least. So she didn't know any sounds. She didn't know any normal things that are just there in our world. <laughs> she was really deprived in any of these things. So she got startled pretty quickly by things she didn't know. like. When she came into the first family, the TV was something that startled her or every single kitchen appliance because she didn't know any of those, right? And those first few weeks are really crucial in getting a puppy used to all those things. That's why it's never a good idea to get a dog from a backyard breeder. But I'm getting off the point. So she was easily startled as a puppy. And there was an incident with her owner dropping the handle off a flexi leash. Those huge handles on those retractable leashes, right? And she ran and that thing followed her, of course, because it was attached to her. And that made her very noise sensitive. So whenever something dropped, especially behind her, she would startle a lot but that was just ignored by the owners they didn't care much they didn't take her out anymore because she just wouldn't take her harness she would run whenever she saw her harness so going outside was just not an option they did have other dogs and they used very ancient training methods so they were not very nice let's just call it that and the other dogs were as well as bella very stressed so they showed aggression toward bella a lot and the other the owners were really proud of that they just were super proud of how dominant their dogs were and all those things so they didn't help Bella at all. So this was what she learned the relationship between dogs looks like, right? Because those dogs were the first ones she met after leaving her family. And when they passed and the owners got a new puppy, Bella did what the previous dogs had done to her. She guarded stuff. She was pretty rough with the puppy, but still a lot nicer than the other dogs were with her because she was just not confident enough to act more roughly and she was just not the type to do so. She was a little softy. So what did happen though was that when the puppy stepped on her, specifically on her back, she would lash out. She would not warn the puppy. She would bite immediately and bite hard. So there were 
wounds on the puppy again and again, but the owners, they punished her, but they didn't really make much of it because they knew dogs are dogs, right? So, of course, they left them alone together and they never bothered assessing if any of them were fine being alone. They just left. When they came back, they found a puppy that was bitten severely and had lost an eye. So what they did was they beat Bella. They were so angry at that precious pure breed puppy had been damaged that they beat her. And after that, she was just locked in a room until they decided that they wanted to have nothing to do with her anymore. Or the woman decided that. The husband actually wanted to keep her, but in the end she decided to rehome her. What actually was a huge win for Bella, because let's face it, that's not a life for a dog, right? Her new family started training with her immediately because they they recognized that Bella didn't trust humans. They didn't trust them, at least. And with her history, they figured this is something only natural on one hand, but also very sad on the other, and they wanted to help her. And they wanted to get her to a point where they can enjoy nature together and just have a dog with them who would enjoy life, right? And of course, they didn't want her to turn against them at some point, because this is always a risk with a very fearful dog. And Bella was a big girl. She was small for Bull Mastiff, but she was still really big. So they wanted to be safe and they wanted her to feel safe as well, which is awesome, <laughs> right? So when they got her, she couldn't be touched. They didn't know how the owners got her into a harness, but they could not touch her. She would hide under a table and she would run when she saw a harness. So that was something she brought with her. The previous owners had told them that she had done that with them as well. So since they couldn't reach her at all, they were lucky enough to have a fenced in yard. So Bella could go outside to do her business and be a little bit outside when she wanted to. She didn't though. She only went outside when she was close to exploding <laughs> with her need to eliminate, right? So she didn't feel safe outside as well. She just felt safe under her table. And that's where they put her safe zone. So they introduced the safe zone, which was just under the table at first. They wanted to move it because the table would at some point host guests and then it wouldn't be ideal. So, but in the beginning, they just took what Bella offered, right? Because they couldn't reach her any way, so they had to take that table. And they gave her just everything nice they put in there. So not only her regular food and water, because she wouldn't come out, so she wouldn't eat if it were somewhere else. They also gave her stuffed toys and little puzzles she could just do by herself. Little food puzzles. And not necessarily those intelligence dog puzzle thingies. They just filled boxes, cardboard boxes, with treats and gave it to her. So those were just little things Bella could do on her own to get a feeling of success, right? And of course, stuffed food toys like Kongs and Licky Mats and stuff like that and bones, things to chew on to get her stress level down and to give her something to do. And what they also did was whenever they walked by her table, they lost a treat and said a marker word. 
because they knew whenever they had introduced a mark word, they could be tell Bella exactly what she did right and when and reward her for it. This can be an awesome tool. So if you haven't introduced one to your dog yet, go to the description and click the link. You will get a free guide for a marker signal. Really, everybody needs one. So this is something they did really fast after Bella moved in. And they just let her sleep it off. They didn't expect anything from her. They put no pressure on her. They were really amazing. So they just gave her time. And what Bella did in the beginning was just sleep. She slept and slept and slept and slept. It was almost as if she had to sleep to process her whole life to that point. So it was really, really intense. And what they also did was they contacted a vet behaviorist to support her with medications. I always recommend doing that with very fearful dogs to get rid of the fear as fast as possible because life in fear is a life without quality. It's not something we can just wait and see if it gets better. We need to change it fast. So that's why with fearful dogs, I always recommend seeing a vet behaviorist as well and get medications. And for her, since she was really processing a lot and she had experienced a lot, she had a very bad history and she was really fearful, she got medication for it. But medication isn't everything, right? If the previous owners had used medication, it wouldn't have changed anything. Because what fearful dogs really need to learn to trust again is nothing bad will happen to them. They can safely expect things. So they don't have to worry about getting punished or having any bad experiences with humans and they know to trust their expectations, all right? So rituals are really important. And that's what the owners did with her little puzzles and her food. So it was roughly the same time every day. So not the same hour necessarily, but always in the morning, always in the evening. And always before the humans went to work or the humans sat down to watch TV, stuff like that. So it was always the same order of things happening. So Bella could get a feeling for it. And what Bella did was she got a little curious and then a little more curious. So in the beginning, she came out of her hiding spot when she went to the garden and then also at night. And at night, the humans could hear her starting to explore the house. And they were really happy because Bella was interested, right? That's a sign of things not being too bad. So they continued what they were doing. And after a while, Bella started to get up at night from under her table and sneak into the bedroom. And they slept in the bedroom with Bella. And in the beginning, she left before the humans really got out of bed. She was pretty sensitive about when they were waking up. So she left quickly. But over time, she trusted more and more and more. And the key was really to give her, her choices and to not put any pressure on her. So she could really feel safe. And that's when she stayed in the bedroom longer until the humans got up. And then she tried coming out of her hiding space during the day as well. And that's when the humans started to announcing whatever they were doing. And again, this gave her an option. Whenever the human said, hey, Bella, I'm coming to you, she could go away. After a while, she didn't. But announcing things happening gives the dog a choice and gives the dog the possibility to prepare for it. So it doesn't startle them, right? And for Bella, this was huge. And 
the beginning was a little slow. Of course, she had to process what happened to her before. But as soon as she started to get curious, they made progress so fast. So fast. And the only thing they needed in the beginning was patience and a guide. <laughs> so they weren't first-time dog owners, but their last dog had been a pretty easygoing dog. So they wanted to have a guide by their side to make as little mistakes as possible. It's never possible to make no mistakes. It's never possible to make no mistakes. We all make them, but they wanted to minimize it. And that's why they got help. And that's how things turned out as quick as it was possible. And I'm almost saying they lived happily ever after, but it's kind of how it goes. <laughs> so again, if you want to build your dog's trust, take away expectations, take away pressure and give him confidence building exercises. They can be so easy, but they are so powerful. And a lot of them, the dog can do on his or her own. So when your dog is still hiding and not letting you come close, you can give him things that he can do on his own. And if you have any questions about that, tell me in the comments or write me an email. Don't forget to leave me a review. I love those. So if you want me to make it public, send me a screenshot. And that way you can help even more people find the podcast and find those little tips and tricks that help get their dog to a point where they can be the companion we always wanted, right? I wish you a lot of fun training your dog. I wish you a lot of fun enjoying nature together. And we'll see each other next time. Bye.